Jamie, Professor Brownlee. Welcome. Thank you. I am uh, delighted to invite Professor Brownlee from Carleton University to be the keynote speaker for our conference entitled Invisibility. Now, Jeremy uh, recently published a book, Academia Inc., Academia Incorporated, and uh, it's an important piece of research. One of the things that you really bring into the spotlight is something which has been developing under the radar of most people on Ontario. You speak about a corporate neoliberal offensive, and I think for most Canadians, uh, they would associate neoliberalism with some form of economic philosophy. And what you are really able to chart is the history of a broader campaign to transform universities into a corporate form. And I wonder if you could speak on that as well as how the creation of a second class of contract professors is central to that neoliberal project. Certainly. Um, well, the neoliberal project, as you said, um, has always involved education, and it's always involved efforts to change the way universities function um, from institutions that are supposed to exist primarily to serve the public good to those that provide a more profitable ground for capitalist expansion. Um, in other words, really what we're talking about here is the transformation of higher education from a public to a private good. Um, and I would I refer to this broader transformative process as corporatization. Um, broadly speaking, corporatization can be defined as the process and the resulting outcomes of the ascendance of business interests, business models, business values uh, within the public university system. Um, and to get more specific, there are a number of key indicators that can be looked at to, to help explain, uh, conceptualize the corporatization process. One key indicator certainly uh, would be the enhanced institutional integration between two very, very different institutions, right? The private corporation uh, and the public university, uh, seen through things like uh, the expansion of public-private partnerships, uh, donor agreements between universities and corporations, um, things like increased corporate control over university curriculums, uh, university infrastructure development. So that's really one key indicator, uh, enhanced institutional in integration. Even more interesting, perhaps, another set of indicators would be uh, the increasing use of business-like practices by public universities themselves. Um, and there's all kinds of different things one could look at here, too. The efforts within the university to redirect research missions toward commercialization, toward private gain. Uh, the incorporation of uh, adoption of corporate management models within the public university. Um, the increasing reliance on a customer pay orientation to university financing, where more and more of university revenues are coming from student tuition, ultimately student debt. Um, and the creation of a new system of academic labor that you mentioned, um, where universities are increasingly relying on contract faculty, really precarious academic labor to do a lot of their, a lot of their teaching, and staff their institutions. Um, if you put all this together, uh, you know, what we're really seeing, it's not so much the universities are being sold off to the private sector, right? They're not being privatized per se. They're not even technically becoming corporations. What's happening is that the uses and the benefits of university resources, university knowledge production is being handed over to the private sector at the public's expense. Um, and this, this is really transforming the nature of the public university in a very fundamental way, um, and not for the better. In my view, what you're seeing are, are deep, qualitative changes in the university's culture, uh, its system of governance, and its approach to teaching and research. Um, and as you mentioned, the casual, casualization of academic labor, to me, is an absolutely foundational aspect of the corporatization of the university. And really what we're talking about here is a, a transformation of academic labor, uh, long-standing transformation that's uh, taken place since the 1970s, right up until the present. Um, it's accelerated, 
considerably over the last few decades. One of the points I make in the book, Academia Inc., is that you know the increasing use of contract faculty by universities really mirrors, it parallels what's been going on in the larger economy. You can see that in all kinds of different corporate industries, right? The increasing reliance on temporary, part-time, flexible uh, labor um, to meet their employment requirements. Well, that's exactly what universities uh, are doing too. And in universities, one of the things that we've seen, uh, certainly that's come out of this, is the creation of a two-tiered system of academic labor, right? Where a minority, now a minority, of uh, professors are in the top tier, right? The tenure stream, uh, very well compensated, uh, enjoy very good pensions and benefits, have significant control over their own work, uh, a lot of say in university governance, very privileged existence, uh, in fact. Uh, whereas those in the bottom tier, um, now I would argue in Canada, certainly in the United States, constitute a majority, um, are working on contract. They're very poorly compensated, often lack pensions and benefits, have little to no say in university governance, and really lack any form of power uh, in the academy or you know, control over their own work. Um, and so what we're seeing is the creation of what some have called an academic underclass within the academy, uh, lots of different you know, terms for second-class citizens within the academy. Um, and this transformation, I don't believe, isn't good for anybody despite what you might hear. Uh, it certainly isn't good for the instructors or the professor as a whole. It has not been good for students and student learning. Um, and it certainly has not been good for public universities who I think have been weakened and undermined as a result of this process, you know, just at a time when we really need them the most to confront some of the most pressing problems of the day, including environmental issues. Uh, so, you know, this, this conference that's going to take place at the University of Ottawa uh, in October, I think is really exciting. Um, and I really hope that it will shed further light on uh, the casualization of academic labor because that's what it's primarily about, uh, not only within the academy perhaps, but also uh, shed some light on it within the, within the public domain too. So really excited to be, be a part of it. Well, uh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, your, the ideas you presented are certainly ones that are going to be of immense interest, not only to our members, the contract faculty at the University of Ottawa, but the larger University of Ottawa community and the public at large, the students uh, and the donors. So um, I'm very delighted that you can come and I look forward to your keynote presentation on October 25. Everyone is invited at the Nostalgia Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom.